What is going on guys, Pat on the shop, and tonight, the moment a lot of you guys have been waiting for, the Vortec head porting videos, something I've been working on for a while now, uh, tweaking back and forth, trying to get good flow numbers out of the Vortec heads. Um, also, big thing tonight is the 4K giveaway, so let's get into this guys. So basically what I did here, guys, is I got a, I have a, so many sets of Vortec heads, uh, a lot of crack sets. Uh, so I was playing with them back and forth on the flow bench because I wanted to do my experiments on my head so you guys don't have to. Uh, the biggest thing I learned about porting Vortec heads, and this kind of, this pretty much is a general thing about any head. It's not about porting to what you think looks good, and I feel like a lot of guys uh, port to what looks like it's gonna flow doesn't actually mean that it's gonna flow well just because it looks like it will doesn't mean it will and I've you know I've learned a lot doing these Vortec heads because I do find they're kind of finicky um, they don't port like older heads where basically the more you can get out of them the better they'll flow they're very particular on where you take material out back and forth on the flow bench ported tried this tried that so I finally got a way that I can easily show you guys how to get some good flow to your Vortec heads so we're going to break these uh, porting videos down uh, bit by bit and the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, porting in uh, unshrouding the valves. And, and I actually what I did is I kind of broke it down so I unshrouded the valves and left the stock uh, runner and everything else the same just and then floated that way to see the difference and where are where we're getting the, gain, uh, the gains in flow. Uh, and, and what part we're getting the gains from and then I threw it all together and did a full port and chamber and all the little tricks and then see as a whole how it all works together. But let's talk about doing the chamber first. So the first thing you want to do is you got to mark out with your head gasket how far you can unshroud the valves. Uh, a lot of guys don't think on these Vortec heads because of the small exhaust valve that you don't need to unshroud them, but I'm gonna show you that actually it is beneficial uh, to some extent to unshroud the exhaust valve. But you gotta put a head gasket on here, the head gasket you're gonna use, and then you gotta mark out around the combustion chamber. Uh, like I like, with you guys I like to do a lot of you do-it-yourselfers. I like to show you, you know, an, an alternative way. Uh, you can use a machinist die, a spray on machinist die like I did here. Uh, spray it on, let it dry, and then trace it out with a razor or uh, oftentimes I'll use like a pick and then just, and do it, just trace it out so you can see the line. But honestly, if you don't, if you don't have uh, the die you don't want to buy it, you're on a budget, you can use a Sharpie. I've done it, I've tried it, I've tried different ways to show you guys uh, you know, cheaper alternatives and you can see here I traced it out with a Sharpie and this one's already been unshrouded. You can see I'm just the line. So, like I said, you gotta center the head gasket on there. A lot of guys will center with the bolts, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of movement. Here's a, a, a little tip and trick what works is if you do have a Sharpie, these smaller ones like this, they actually fit quite good. And now, it's a tapered piece, any tapered piece. I just found a Sharpie uh, by accident, works pretty good. And if you have two, it's actually better, two or, two or three. Uh, you can put the bolts in two or just have two or three Sharpies in there. And then it, it holds it, you can see how much better that is. Uh, so that works. And then all you gotta do, I don't have a spare, uh, Sharpie here, but all you got to do is get that centered and then you're going to trace out your combustion chamber or if you're using a uh, machinist die, you're just going to go around and uh, scrape that out with a razor blade or like I said, I use a pick. Alright, so I made two little marks here. We're going to open the valve up approximately uh, 500 thou and then we're going to bring this, this is just a quarter inch piece of metal dowel. I don't, I'm not going to use any fancy um, uh, portering balls or anything like that. This is just something you guys can easily find. It's just a quarter inch metal dowel. And I'm going to bring it around the valve until it hits the, the valve and I can't make any more sweep around. So that's one contact point. So make a mark there. So you can see and then you're going to come around the other side. Same thing. And you're going to make a mark there just like that. So in between these two marks is where we have to clean up to unshroud this valve. 
and the, the actually the machinist die, this is kind of where the machinist die is nice. So you can mark, and then as you're grinding, you can actually kind of have a better idea where you're taking material out, because uh, it's all, you know, blue inside here. So um, this is where we're going to have to take material, and we're going to do the same thing on the exhaust side and take a look there. So all right, with the exhaust, same thing. We're going to bring this around. There's contact. We're going to make a mark. The exhaust, it does, you don't have to take much out. You're pretty much just taking it to the head gasket line that you made there, the bore. Same thing, bring it around. So it's really, you're just cleaning it up, this section here, and kind of helping with the swirl. You don't have to go up past this point here. So you're really just cleaning a little bit. But I'll show you in the flow charts what difference that little bit of cleaning up made. Because it can, it'll, if you really try, it'll go through, but this is where you just want to clean it up. So let's, let's uh, go ahead and do that, and I'll show you what it looks oh, one like. One more thing. You're going to want to get yourself two extra valves as grinder valves. So these two valves you're not going to want to use because you, as you're cleaning up the seat, even if you're really, or if you're cleaning up the combustion chamber, even if you're really careful, you don't want to slip and, and nick one of your seats. So you kind of sacrifice the edge of the valve a little bit as you're getting down in here uh, to clean this up. So uh, I'd get yourself two extra valves, one intake, one exhaust, and use them to protect the seats as you're doing the combustion chambers. So all I'm going to use for this uh, chamber is uh, just a round nose carbide. This is just a quarter inch grinder, Mac Tools. It's a Mac Tools um, carbide. So, you know, these are a higher end carbide and they work quite well. Lifetime warranty if the teeth chip and stuff, so that's always a bonus. It's always good to have a good set of carbides in your toolbox. So, uh, another thing I always do is I have a shop vac. It just helps with some of the debris. It's not going to collect everything, but I find it just helps. And always uh, wear safety glasses. And sometimes a respirator is not a bad idea either. All right, as you can see, uh, we took out some material here. And honestly, it's about taking out you know, the minimal amount of material. You don't want to go too crazy. You don't want to open up your combustion chamber too big because the benefit of the Vortex is having that small 64cc combustion chamber. And the more you take out, uh, the bigger that chamber is going to get. So we took out just enough. As you can see now, we can come around with this. It just touches, and that, that's going to be good. So right there, it just touches. And if you want to go a little bit more, you can. But as you can see, it can come around. We did the exhaust valve as well. Took out a little bit of that area. And basically, as you can see, we went just to the edge of our scrape mark. And if you're wondering how close you can get to the head gasket, uh, basically I like to just touch the line because most head gasket manufacturers recommend 10 thou. The head gasket be 10 thou bigger than the bore minimum. Uh, bore or combustion chamber. So basically if you can get it just to that etch line that you made, then you should be perfect and that kind of works out for these Vortec heads as far as how much shrouding on these uh, stock valves. Uh, the next point we're going to deal with here is uh, around this um, the spark plug boss here. And it, it's not much of a restriction, but it is a little bit. It does make a little bit of a difference, but it is a little bit on the exhaust. So we're just going to round that off just slightly. All right, so there you go, guys. That's kind of the finished product as far as we're gonna go. If you guys wanna go in and polish them more, uh, that's fine, that's really up to you. Uh, but as far as flow, this is what we're gonna deal with. This is what I'm gonna show you. I've tried uh, different things on, uh, I think it was this head. I've over, over, you know, kind of got into the edge of it and like over ported it a little bit around the valve. Uh, you can see in this one I went I went ham just to see how much of a difference and I opened the chamber up quite a bit I think the chamber ended up being close to 70 cc's when I was done so I didn't that you know that's not ideal so I but I wanted to see how far I could go like I said let me kind of wreck these heads so you guys don't have to on yours guessing um, but what I found is this was it this was the most you get this is this only took me you know 10 minutes to do Get that spot there, all so you can see, nice and cleaned up. 
And uh, David Vizard, uh, the legend himself, has done a similar video, if you've seen his Vortec videos, and he, he found the same result. So uh, he found out just cleaning this section. He didn't really say anything about the exhaust, but I'll show you why I did the exhaust um, in mine here. But this is basically what you're dealing with. See how this can move freely all the way along? It's exactly what you want. That allows airflow to come around the valve, just like that. And uh, we're going to take a look at the flow numbers and I'll show you exactly what the benefits of this are. And this is a completely stock port, so we're gonna, it's going to be neat so you guys can see just what we did here, what the difference it's going to make. Alright guys, so let's take a look at the difference uh, between the unshrouded valves and the shrouded valve. So, uh, sorry that I, these graphs are different colors. I know uh, someone commented about... Um, I wish they could be all one color. It's just the way that it graphs it in the software. So um, if you take a look at here, this is the yellow is the unshrouded valve versus the blue, the dark blue is the intake stock. So as you can see how beneficial unshrouding the intake valve really is. Uh, David Vizard had similar results, exact, actually very, very similar results, and he found that this is the most important part, and I will 100% agree with him. Uh, if you're porting your Vortec heads and you don't know really what you're doing and you want to just make, uh, you know, help them out if you have them off, this is the most beneficial. I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, not so much for peak flow, but for overall average flow, unshrouding the valves is the most beneficial part of vor uh, Vortec porting. Uh, so as you can see, pretty good results throughout the whole uh, lift, except up at the top. But this is just such a slight variance. I'm going to say there's almost no difference here. So only positive um, uh, results. As far as the exhaust goes, I notice when I float all different types of Vortex, there's always this dip around um, uh, 4,000's lift, uh, 400 lift, sorry. And there's this drop. But when you unshroud the valves, that drop disappears. So that is a little bit of a benefit. So you can see you're you're taking very little off and the exhaust valve isn't very shrouded. So you're not doing a whole lot. But as you can see, 145, say 146 versus 157 here, that's a big increase for just a little bit of work, a few minutes of work, and that's where you can get the increase. But if you've seen my other videos, uh, you know going to the one six exhaust valve makes uh, you know quite a good quite an increase in flow, but um, we're going to show you what you can get with with porting uh, the the exhaust side, and so it's kind of the opposite with the intake unshrouding the valves is your biggest benefit, but with the exhaust actually the port work is going to make more of a difference. So uh, it's it's the opposite of the intake when it comes to porting Vortec heads. Uh, and that's and that's what I've you know just with flow bench results that's what I've learned the difference you can't kind of you can't treat both ports the same and that kind of goes with porting most heads but the vortex seem to be very picky on where you can take meat out and the results you get but that's uh, that's basically what you're looking at with just that little bit of work on shrouding the valves and you just have to take a little bit out uh, and you don't need anything fancy like I showed you I tried to use what normal guys have access to and nothing kind of fancy tools or, or um, porting balls, anything like that. I just use a quarter inch dowel, piece of dowel, and get, got that clearance around the valve, and this is the results you got. So pretty good and uh, makes a big difference. So there you go guys, now you got your chamber done. You've seen the benefits of doing the chamber. Uh, so it's really quite, quite interesting how much you get out of just touching the chamber. I was surprised even on the exhaust, given that's a small valve, there's not a lot of shrouding there. So it was interesting to see the increase in flow just by doing the chamber. Um, the, the thing with the Vortec heads I find is less and more. It, less is more. It's, it's more about grinding in the areas that it wants rather than just grinding everywhere making everything big and and you know making it look like you think it should flow rather than how what it actually wants it's about putting the 
work into the head where it wants it rather than where you think it wants it. So um, we didn't take too much of the chamber. The chamber is only a couple cc's bigger. You you know I always recommend cc'ing your heads after you're done because uh, it's going to vary a little bit, but depending on how much you take taken out. But if you do it the way I showed you, it should only be a couple cc's bigger. Uh, so you're not adding a whole bunch. And this is honestly the max. Uh, no, I'm not going to say the max, but this is the most you're going to get with a minimal amount of work that only took a few minutes to do. So uh, you could go, you know, crazy more, but things aren't that thick on these Vortec heads and you're not going to see that much uh, increase in flow. I've tried it. You can see how big this one's hogged out. It just really didn't make much of a difference. So uh, do just the minimum like I showed you around there and, and you're laughing. So uh, next up, we're going to, next video, we're going to talk about going inside uh, the throats and opening those up and that's really where it gets interesting because that is very much so less is more. Um, I've kind of, <laughs> you kind of start going backwards if you don't grind in the right spots and I feel like a lot of guys are just overporting uh, their vortex heads and they're actually hurting flow especially under the, you know, the flow numbers under 500 thou. All right, guys, I did not forget about the giveaway. So if you want a free beehive spring kit for your Vortec heads, it's real simple. All you have to do is go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and comment below, I love Vortex. I will be going through and selecting randomly with an app one of the comments that says, I love Vortex to one of my subscribers, and I will mail you a free Vortex spring kit, full setup, valve seals, retainers, springs, keepers, everything to outfit your Vortex heads, full setup. Right now, I have very, very limited stock on my kits because of manufacturing issues due to coronavirus. So uh, I saved one kit because I really wanted to give one away to one of my subscribers. So please uh, just comment below if you want a Vortex spring kit. Uh, like I said, just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and comment below, I love Vortex. I will be randomly selecting uh, um, a subscriber, and I will contact you and mail you a kit, and you're going to love it, and we'll get your hot rod up and running, making more power than ever. The Beehive kit combined with some porting, you're freaking rocking and rolling. So please like and subscribe, comment below, I love Vortex.